I don't want to put words in your mouth, but with all that's going on around Disney and ESPN and all their tweets, I don't know. It's not so bad not being there, it seems like. Seems like there's a lot of stuff going on there. Like, And why? let me ask you this. This pisses me off, all right? So ESPN is going to put this thing out about we stand with. Well, everybody stands with these. Nobody's not standing with anybody. Right. No one's not. I mean, you don't get moral high ground because you put a tweet out that says we stand with people. Mm-hmm. You don't get a moral high ground. We all stand with people. I, we all stand with the lesbian community. We, I, well, who doesn't stand with <laughs> right. it? Right. No. Um, yeah, that tweet was a little bizarre to me. And like the, the first sentence of it is um, about human rights. But like, OK, so you have human rights, but you also have mandates. So you don't think like. Forcing someone to inject something against their will is a human right. I mean, I don't know. Like when it's politically and socially convenient, you want to take a stand for human rights and call it. Yeah, um, it, it's very bizarre to me. It was bizarre to me that um, a couple of announcers who I've worked with and I have a tremendous amount of respect with and genuinely like felt the need to to pause and take a moment of silence before a game and protest to the Florida bill that they call the don't hate, don't call gay bill. Um yeah, I, I don't know. It's 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 kind of weird. And like the encouragement of Disney employees to walk out and protest of it, um, which if you really look at the bill, um, it first of all, it doesn't mention the word gay, <laughs> which is the irony of the whole thing. Right. Um, right. And it right. Only right. Applies to K through three and just restricts schools from getting into gender ideology and um and so forth and it, it it's not very restrictive at all and if you want to have those conversations with your children you certainly can nothing is precluding parents from being parents i mean what a novel concept right um but this indoctrination of, of young people and encouraging them to question their sexuality and gender when they should be learning their abcs and basic math and other uh basic skills that i think parents send them to school to learn um, and, and not some of the more complicated issues when they're like five years old. I, I, I'm not sure why people have such an issue with and think it's, it's anti LGBTQIA plus if I've lost an initial in there, I apologize. You've lost. You've, <laughs> yeah, you've lost. You've lost. You can't, I, 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 I'm stunned by it because, you know, again, I've had, you know, you're, you're on various group chats and, our third grade teacher was Sister Geraldine, and if Sister Geraldine would have called us in and said, hey, fellas, we're going to talk about whether you're a boy or not, and, you're, and we're like, what? Shut up. We're going to go play Brad Greenwell's team on recess. Leave me there. <laughs> and my daughter's, a teach, my, my daughter's a teacher. You think she wants to have these conversations? I, I hope she cra- doesn't. She wants to teach kids. Yeah. No. She wants to teach kids. Teach kids. Help kids. Not determine whether or not. I don't know. They're boy, girl. What are we doing? This is insanity yeah, and, to me. And even if you take the argument like, well, there's kids that are struggling with this, that are in unsafe environments or uh, where like parents are concerned. There's a there's a paragraph. There's like a clause in the bill to address that. Like if they think there could be issues at home um, to per- help protect these children. So, yes, teachers should teach. They should look out for the best interests of their students. This bill does not prohibit that. And to turn it into something it isn't um, for the sake of, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a DeSantis smear campaign thing. Um, I'm not sure what the motivation is between having just a false conversation about what this actually is and what it represents. And I think that's like this dangerous place we've gotten into is where we're not even in touch with reality anymore. And we we say things um, because they stick instead of because of them like having substance and truth. And now the truth is being convoluted and that puts you in a, a really weird and dangerous place where like you can't have honest, can- candid conversations with people about stuff that really matters um, because the truth isn't being utilized anymore. And, and, and that to me is concerning. I think if you really sit down and like talk to people about what the substance of this is, most reasonable people could agree that there isn't anything really dangerous or threatening in this legislation, um, but they don't want to go there. They just want to attack and say that, you know, they're being discriminated against and this is harmful to, to a certain um, subset of children. But um, I think what it really tries to do is just let kids be kids. And what, I mean, I think, God, we need that more than now than ever. 
Oh, my God. I couldn't imagine, number one, being homeschooled all year. Number two, having to wear a mask when I go back. Number three, having to stay six, eight yeah. feet away. Number four, got to get a bunch of injections. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I swear to God, I just, I, I'm good. Hey, do whatever you want to do. But I do know this. If you don't just fully support it, you get called mm-hmm. all kinds mm-hmm. of names. And I, what did you think? I, I, I'm going to give you my take on the cut-in. I thought the cut-in was ridiculous. I, I, uh, L Duncan may be the night. Nice, I don't know. I mean, I fine. Uh, I know Courtney Lyle, my wife's worked with him and she just started laughing. She says, Oh my God, this, and I know Carolyn Peck didn't have any substance to it. Cause she had to read. She, she had, you know, I think this is the, it's like, stop. Like, like okay. So it, it, uh, why isn't, why aren't we wondering about ESPN's position on everything? Don't we have to have ESPN's position on Right, all where things? do you draw, draw the line then? Import- They've really gone in all in on right. this. Um, I, I try to put myself in the announcer's positions, right? And, okay, what went into that production meeting? What was the discussion being had? Uh, what were the pros and cons to it? Was this something they genuinely believed? Was this something that the response – and I personally, and I haven't reached out to Courtney or Carolyn um, – I got the sense that they saw stuff on social media and just felt a need to respond. Um, Instead of saying, what's the impact impact of this game on these players in this moment, um, I think they got into the social media weeds a little bit. And and that was probably, I'm assuming here, again, I have not spoken to them. It just felt really unnecessary. Um, There are times, I think, when we deviate off the court into social issues, and I think we've been encouraged to do that. You and I both know that from our time at ESPN, but it was always within reason. There was always a connection. There was always um, a a tie, whether it be locally or nationally or directly with a player or a team. Um, This felt felt forced. This felt like we're going to jam this in here because we're responding to something that we're seeing externally. And um, I, I, it, it just felt completely unnecessary and, um, and uncomfortable. I, and I'm not saying like they don't both genuinely believe what they said, but there was something uncomfortable about that, that moment to me that felt a little disingenuous. And so to me, I, I, I don't know what their private feelings are. Um, I think they're trying to do the right thing and, and, and support um, a community that has supported women's athletics. And that was important to them. And I, I can understand where they're coming from from that direction. Um, but it just felt, it felt very forced to me. 